Jessica notices her little brother watching Hamza videos. Why are you watching this stuff? Why don't you just embrace feminism? And you Hey, I hit subscribe button, man. This shit is funny. I didn't know him. This is my first time watching his videos, and this shit is like retarded. Why won't you just listen to me? But it's too late. Jessica's brother is far too base to listen to the same conditioning that led him to an unhappy life already. He often looks down at himself with a sense of distaste. He sees what the modern world has convinced him, brainwashed him to believe. And he's lonely because of that. And so finally he has taken life by the balls because he wants to become more like Adonis. Adonis has been a masculine man for so Yo, this shit is, is this like, um, fucking British or like UK, like eight European, like, like this shit is retarded. I don't know. Is it just me, chat? So long that he couldn't even imagine anything else. And you want to know what happens when a man reclaims his birthright to his core masculine energy? He feels aligned to his purpose and mission. He feels like there is a point in his life. He looks down at his rock hard carved from marble body with a sense of pride and confidence. He looks around his tribe of the men and women that he cares about and he feels connected and loved and present and grateful. He wouldn't trade this for anything else. Someone posted about me on the feminism subreddit on reddit.com and actually one of the Reddit mods reply. There's a feminism subreddit. What the hell? I bet you that shit toxic as hell. They tell a girl to go find the dick ASAP. Right. And this is what the Reddit moderator has said, and then I'll read you the original post that wrote about me. This is the moderator. Red pill YouTubers are insecure and sad little men who make money off the insecurities of teenage boys. It's shameful, and if I met this guy IRL, I would laugh in his face. He's a cult leader of little boys. How sad and useless. Bet his mom is so proud of his belief. My bad, chat. My bad. Beliefs about male supremacy, the disgusting misogynist. Anyone who needs help getting themselves or their younger siblings off the incel pipeline should try advice or resources in the feminism subreddit, the men's lib subreddit. <laughs> that was the Reddit moderator. Now let's read the official post, which is about me and it's titled, My brother watches Hamza and it's scaring me. My little brother, who's 14 years old, listens to a lot of red pill content and his main source of the red pill has been watching this YouTuber called Hamza. Good man. I constantly. Hey, yo, it's crazy because I'm just kind of like a passive, like very like laid back type of guy. He's not like one of the extreme red pill guys that be like in a red pill rage. Like you could always like, it could be worse. He could be watching um Sneeko and be down the conspiracy theory routes like on like a high level. He's just trying to like probably get in the gym. He's probably like trying to eat right and trying to find a nice girl that that treats him right. We see him watching his videos, so I decided to look into what he preaches in his videos. From what I saw, he was just bragging about his sex life in uni and saying that working out is the easiest way to attracting women and that working women are far less happy than housewives. They are. That's a consistently proven fact that the one job that results in the highest levels of happiness and satisfaction is housewife slash mother. There's no career in the entire world for men or women that brings as much happiness to a person as motherhood does to a woman. He also constantly body shames people saying that if they aren't in shape, they are Jeffries. Well, they are some sort of red. W low brother, W low brother. That is funny as hell. You want your friends, you try to push your friends to get to be the best version of themselves, or at least want to be the best version of himself. Um, I think it's your it's your responsibility as a man to to even if you can't change people, you to spark the mind to change people because they have to willing to drink the water. The horse has to drink the water. You can only bring the horse to the to the water. Get what I'm saying? Pill insults. I was horrified by this. This is the best part. And asked my brothers to stop watching him and embrace feminism. And it's okay to be more feminine. He looked at me as if I was dumb and said he had no feminine traits and that he's going to the gym. Being more masculine and taking the red pill is the only path for men to take. Bro is based. I felt very disturbed by this as I know he also listens to Andrew Tate. When I asked him about Tate, he said that he taught good ways to make money as if he was a businessman. Right now, I don't know what to do as a lot of what he's how is he not a businessman? He makes, he said on like previous podcasts that he makes like eight, nine million a month. Like, how is that not a businessman? I don't, I'm, I'm confused. Like, are you a businessman? Big sis, can you teach your brother, little brother about business? Nah. 
he's watching is challenging our feminist views and I'm scared he'll turn into a misogynist. So this is a, it's like a secret user. They've just made an account to post this, you know, throw away 3797, it's like some random account, right? So I'm going to address this woman who is concerned for her little brother's lack of feminism. It would sound awesome if in this video I was really wholesome and I was being nice to you, but young woman, I think you need to understand that men aren't happy. There's a reason why your brother doesn't want to be a feminist because feminism is a joke. Feminism is what has caused decades of women's unhappiness and unsatisfaction. It's what's caused decades of the destruction of families that caused the largest happiness increase we could have ever gotten. People don't get into families anymore because of feminism. Feminism doubled the supply of workers into the workforce. Have you ever heard of the concept supply and demand? When you double the supply of something and the demand... They said feminism doubled the supply of workers in the workplace. Not all women think it's stupid to be a housewife. Demand of it doesn't really increase. Well, then the price of it decreases because we've got more of that thing. A hundred years ago, a father could have left his family in the morning, went to work, come back home at 6, 7 p.m. And that was it. He would be able to provide for his family and he felt so purposeful. And his wife, the mother of their children, was at home full time looking after the kids. That was the time when humans were the most happy in the last century. Now, because of the cancer that is feminism and the big push that they convinced and brainwashed women to get into the workplace to degrade themselves because women were happier when they were housewives and mothers. That's a proven fact. Well, when you double the supply of the workers, you can't pay them more. You have to pay them the same or even less. And this is why wages have been stagnated for decades. You see, your brother isn't a feminist, not because he wants... Wait, wait. So I'm confused. So hold on, hold on. So he said, since feminism happened, you double the, the workers in the, in the workplace and you pay the people just as the same or even less because there's twice as much product being made and supply and demand so you can't pay people more y'all get it the shit blew my mind chat wants to be a misogynist, not because he hates women, but your brother is not a feminist because he actually cares for women. Now, the thing is, this woman who I was just addressing is not going to listen to this. Maybe they'll post this video on the feminism subreddit and get us more clout and attention. That's nice. I speak directly to my boys now. I have said from the start of the times where I've been making these videos that sometimes we have to pretend that we're like these normal people because they won't understand us. Do you really think that this woman who wrote this post saying that she's scared that her brother is going to the gym, she's scared that her brother is watching content where we speak about improving Listen, Big Sis, I don't know how you scared that your brother's getting in the gym. I don't know. You should be happy that your brother cares about his health and that he only wants to deal with girls that really care about him and treats him right and that he wants to get his money on point. I'm like, I'm confused. He's a sister. You should want the best for him. It seems like you're trying to hold him back and or trying to brainwash him into thinking something that's good for him that's really not good for him. Like, I'm like... Where's the connection at? Like, common sense ain't so common. Moving our mental health, where we speak about making friends and building a tribe. She's scared of these things. She's scared for her brother's safety and concerned that he might become a misogynist because he's watching my videos on like how to text girls properly. Some people out there are so close-minded, so unable to just see things from other people's perspectives that they will instantly label you as a misogynist, sexist, anything, racist, anything. And these labels are very powerful. So now I want to speak directly to the very young men watching this, the 14, 15 year olds out there. Maybe you have a sister just like this, who's, you know, prying and at saying, Wait, why are you watching Andrew Tate? He's a misogynist. There's something very important that I want to walk you through. And it's not very clickbait or exciting. So this part of the video might be boring, but this may be some of the most important thing you ever do with your life. And that is to observe your beliefs. Analyze the beliefs that you have in your mind. Why do you believe a certain thing? And also try to question, why does that person over there believe this certain thing? When someone looks at you and says, Andrew Tate is a misogynist, maybe you shouldn't believe it straight away. Maybe you should take some time to think, okay, do I believe that? Facts. Why do he believe in God and why does this person over here don't believe in God? Is believing in God a good? So I should side with this guy because he believes in God and everything is good. And this person doesn't believe in God and everything they're doing is not good, degenerate. Like, 
that as a fact, where is the data, the evidence, the information that shows Andrew Tate or Hamza is a misogynist? Misogyny means that these people actively dislike women. But Hamza has hundreds of videos about improving himself so that I can get love in my life. If he hated women, he'd be making videos like, oh yeah, women aren't even anything. You don't even need women in your life and everything. But he says in most videos that love and relationships is the most important part of life. And he even seems to support the women's developments in his lives. I can see 50 different videos where he's actually helped women. So maybe this person who said to me that this guy on the internet is a misogynist, sexist, terrorist, racist, whatever. Maybe this person who has this belief has simply just believed something that they've read on Twitter or on Facebook and you know on, on TikTok or something. I don't have to believe in the same thing. I'm going to read some of the comments from this post and they're all on this subreddit feminism, which of course says a lot. The top comments is, I would be very uncomfortable with this if I were you. However, given you've tried, maybe you could engage another adult to help. Does he have any positive male role models that you could mention it to? You know what blows my mind? These people are literally like, they just don't understand, do they? I may be, and I'm not trying to boast here. I hope that he's got some other ones. You know, I hope that this 14 year old has got other male role models, but I may be one of his very, very few positive male role models out there. And they think that this kind of content is misogyny. So I want you to think right now, what kind of positive male role model are they going to tell this young man that he should follow instead? Maybe the kind of one. They're going to tell him, go watch James Charles. Adonis who's so positive that he wears dresses to offend traditional masculinity. Hassan? Hassan Piker? And then the original poster, the woman whose brother it is, she replied, it's his cousins that got him onto Hamza. Thank you. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. Most women, most women raise their sons one, to be one step away from wearing dresses. That's just, that's just the truth. They don't, a boy has to be a man, like, you need you need him to be a man, rough, rugged, rough around the edges, like. Thank you. And he has other strong male role models. But when I asked him why he doesn't follow them, he says that they haven't reached the level of wealth and masculinity he's open to attain. So we have an ambitious young man who's looking up to the kind of guys that he wants to be like. And that happens to be me and maybe it happens to be Andrew Tate as well. And she has said, oh yeah, he's got some strong male role models. If he doesn't want to be like them, how strong are they? Another comment, you can lead by example. Feminism to young and insecure men is scary and intimidating, but just showing how a grown man behaves and treats women with respect will go a long way as we've been doing here. This comment is literally someone saying, feminism to young and insecure men. You see this 14 year old, this brother of the girl who's posted this. He's 14, he's been going to the gym, he's being ambitious. He's actually trying to make more money, be more confident. And all of these girls on the feminism subreddit are calling him insecure because he doesn't want to be a feminine man. They think that's insecurity. And calling him on his sexist- They want him to cry, they want him to show emotion. They don't want him to practice stoicism, to be strong, the backbone of the family to be um, a gentleman, like, they haven't seen scary shit yet until they they seen a real feminine man. This jail's full of feminine men. I mean, men are men that show their feelings. They let their feelings get the best of them. It's a jail full of them motherfuckers. We gotta practice stoicism. Just behavior and attitudes is important. Where has he been sexist? Being around a misogynist is a lot like being around someone who is racist. So now I'm being addressed as someone who's racist or misogynist. And this is the original poster who's replied about her brother. He claims that he is far from insecure and that both Hamza and Andrew Tate greatly improved his health, both mentally and physically. He says without them, he would have been a slave to the matrix. I honestly don't know what to do with him. Here is a young man saying that finding these masculine role models online has improved his mental health and his sister is replying in a way where she's like, oh, I just don't know what, what to do about him. I just wish he was depressed again. I just wish he was anxious. I wish that he was low status again. I wish that he wasn't trying to elevate his status as a young man. I wish that he just believed the same conditioning that I did. Men and women are the same. Another reply from someone with a bunch of emojis. I think you honestly need to bully and troll him back from the brink. It's what the only the way. Really? And then someone replies to that comment. Yeah, there's a good point. There's no limit to the stupidity of people like Hamza, whoever he is, and Tate. At this point, even I'm thinking, okay, have I faked this post? Has someone been faking this? Because this literally sounds like faked, like how silly these people are. The original poster replies to that, that comment saying, you should bully your brother out of wanting to become masculine. And she replies, I am considerably taller than him. And so whenever he watches Hamza, I do bully him, but nothing works as he's latched. You bully your brother. That doesn't make sense. You're taller than your little brother and you bully him because he watches someone that teaches him to be better. I, that is crazy. Like, that is crazy. 
and he latches on to ideology like stoicism. Stoicism, yeah, that's why it doesn't get to him. Onto this ideology of stoicism. What a top tier young man. His sister is bullying him to become a feminist, to become a weak feminine man. And he's invoking stoicism. He's getting tested each and every day. Poor guy can't even watch some Hamza videos and some Tate shorts anymore. Young man, if you're watching this, find a way to contact me and I will mental you for free. Someone replied, the housewife thing is easy to disprove since so many needed to be drugged into oblivion, they were miserable. That's probably not true. And there isn't a lot of research to show that housewives in the 1900s or previous were drugged into oblivion for them to enjoy. Actually, housewives and mothers had the greatest jobs and still do have the greatest jobs. And so the original poster replied to this and said, I tried bringing up that point, but he said that Hamza's girlfriend doesn't work and is far happier than working women. Well, yeah, of course they do. I want you to imagine right now, right? Just imagine this, this sort of reality, which is kind of hard to achieve, but just imagine you become so successful and so wealthy, you know, your income is very high, that when you meet a girl who's working some job that she doesn't really like and she doesn't really know what she wants to do in the career world, that then she just doesn't need to work anymore when she's around you. I met my girl in Thailand months ago. We were both traveling. I was with my friend. She was with her brother. Damn, I think that's dope. Like, you so much on your purpose and working hard and you get um support your girl. I think that's dope. Even if she wants to work, you can still support majority of the bills. I was just telling someone this. It's my job to provide as a man. And she wanted to like continue traveling and everything. And you know, she had a job back at home, but she didn't really like it. Well, as soon as I left Thailand, she left too and came with me in the UK. And we stayed in Scotland for a month in just a fancy Airbnb. Then we went to London for two months. Then we went to Dubai. She didn't have to work through this time. So you want to know what she did with the day? She'd wake up and literally just like want to cuddle me. She'd spend time sunbathing, reading, listening to music, just like journaling and just going to the gym for like two hours a day, swimming, just getting food and just waiting for me to like finish work so she could spend time with me. And she said that this was the happiest times of her life. This is what bothers me the most. You know, you can talk about equality and stuff fine. When women try to convince other women that feminism and being career focused is the way, they don't realize how evil this advice is because we need to speak about this right now. And this is what's going to get me labeled as a misogynist in this video. But you need to understand this and you need to stop the cancer that is feminism from invading your loved ones. This is what happens when a woman becomes career focused. And, you know, they can do that absolutely fine. If that's what you want to do, fine. But when a woman. Hey, yo, these edits are crazy, like funny as hell becomes career focused. She pushes off serious relationships and motherhood till it often gets too late. Women really only have this window to get pregnant and have children safely till around age 30 to 35, around that time. After around age 30, roughly for most women, that's when complications in pregnancy really drastically increases. So the best case scenario is that a woman gets pregnant with her husband at age 18, 19, 20, 21, you know, like the early 20 years and not later. But when a woman chooses to prioritize a career, which might be like something that she really wants to do, the issue is by prioritizing a career, you generally need to put family off the pedestal, which is not something that you should do time and time again. If you've ever watched those videos, which are on YouTube about like what dying old aged people would like to say about their lives and you know, what was the best part of their lives? You want to know the most consistent answer that old people give of what was the best thing in their entire lives. Family. Time and time and time and time again, all the time, people will always rate their family as the most important thing in their lives, never their career. The only kind of person. Yeah, I don't get Listen, man, I do a lot of shit I don't like and I don't want to do. And family makes me the happiest. If people just say family don't make them the happiest and career makes them the happiest, I, I'm confused because it just seems like they just want to be a slave to their boss or to, to, to the powers that be. A job can never make me happy, no matter how much money it gives me. I want freedom. I want money to buy freedom to spend less time working. That's the whole point of it. Not to be working in a fucking place for 10 hours, eight hours, fucking 12 hours. It's the dumbest shit ever. I can't do that forever. That's just, that's just wild person who rates their career as the most important thing in their lives is an ultra masculine man. And the reason why he rates that so, so highly is because it allows him to provide for his family. What these modern day feminists don't understand is that when they push women to pursue careers it instead is. of motherhood, the family breaks down and everyone gets depressed. I'm 25 years old. I should be married with two children at this age. If you're like 20 years old, bro, a hundred years ago, you would have been married with a kid. I want you to imagine this right now. I want you to imagine we lived in the early 1900s and you and I both knew, let's say we were both like 14 years old. We we both knew that we'd be married with children four years from now when we were 14. You really think you and I are going to mess around and watch 
day and you know just like sit around doing nothing or do you think me and you would go work in like the factory and already start like getting a higher income and working really hard and start getting some promotions age 17 me and you both meet like our wives and we literally like fall in love and she is so pure so beautiful that instead of like her focusing on her career because she knew that her man would do it she's been focusing on being a beautiful housewife and a fantastic mother and so we have children at age 18 19 imagine what that would have done to us don't imagine you know with our bias of the modern day because things are different i want you to imagine if everything just reset and we knew that we were going to have children at age 18 or 19. Imagine how disciplined we would have been. Imagine how purposeful we would have been. Imagine what level of masculinity we would have had. Feminists don't really understand this because they're very like blindsided. They just think about like this. Facts, but yet they, they, they fight to become equal and they want to work so much. And now look, minimum wage haven't went up in four years, five years. People are not able to pay for a bunch of stuff, man. It's, it's crazy. People are struggling along. They think people were struggling before. Inflation is super high. Uh, a head of, of lettuce is fucking $6. It used to be like 2 This shit is wild. I just bought some bananas, and bananas are fucking out the roof. It used to be super cheap first level of consequence which is yeah like you know equality is really important guys if men can work the women should work too but they don't realize that working a full-time job for the majority of people isn't a positive thing like that that should that's common sense isn't it i think almost everyone can admit this working a full-time job for probably 80 percent of people 90 percent of people is more of a negative than it is a positive it's not like a good thing to go out there into the career world unless you are like a top tier performer and for example you've got a business or you're really high up in some kind of career that you gives you like a good amount of status fine but for the majority of people who are working jobs can't we all agree that the most people who are working jobs aren't even happy with their job so why are we flooding our wives our the mothers of our children into the workplace because you know what happens with this truthfully these feminists are going to hate me for saying this but you need to understand this and if there's any women who kind of agree with me here you need to understand this it's going to sound a little bit insulting a woman will always submit to a man it used to be that a woman would submit to her father and then when she was off age and married she would submit to her husband women's happiness was sky high back then now guess what young women don't even submit to their fathers anymore because most fathers a week. Women don't submit to their husbands anymore because they don't really get married or have husbands these days or most husbands are weak. Women submit to their bosses. Your future wife should have submitted to you and you would have been the, like the highest tier guy. They get that chat. He said, women <laughs> they don't listen to their man, they don't listen to their father, they listen to their bosses. I can her life. Now it's her boss. It's her boss that she's been conditioned to obey, to submit to. I want you to think of how much that could mess up your relationship with her. When she spends 40 hours a week submitting to a different guy who pays her and who provides for her, well, suddenly she doesn't need you. And you know, she makes her own money. And if you do so divorce, the government will give you her a lot more. So she has an incentive not to stay in a nuclear, healthy relationship. The destruction of families has come from feminism. It's come from women like this. Another comment, and I, I swear, to God, these these seem like fake. Another comment. I can't even say it on YouTube anymore because we'll get like censored. But like, bully the little p right back. Mirror his behavior until it's annoying, or he'll get it eventually, or hopefully at least die trying. Now, the original poster is replied to someone, and she said, "I've told my parents about it, and they don't know a thing about the red pill or stuff like this. I've tried telling them it promotes misogyny, and it backfired horribly on me because they asked me how, and I was at a loss for words as I couldn't really explain that well. Remember what I told you before that we need to analyze the beliefs that we have in our mind. She has this belief that I'm a misogynist, that her little brother joining our cult, our movement, and watching our videos will become a misogynist, and she does." even know why she believes this her parents asked her okay like how is this misogyny tell us and she was at a loss for words she couldn't even explain why this was misogynist so do you think that this is an intelligent person who has truly like come to the conclusion with evidence that this is misogyny or do you think it's someone who's just kind of like abruptly seen something judged a book by its cover and said yep you know it's a guy talking about masculinity masculinity is a really bad thing isn't it someone replied and said i hate this idea that going to the gym is masculine and this original poster with the brother she replied he says that building an aesthetic muscular physique is one of the most masculine things a man can do as most men are out of shape. One time he saw one of his female cousins and sent them Hamza's Lux Maxing video. This was very disrespectful. <laughs> Someone else commented, maybe direct him to better masculine influencers. Yeah, 100%. Bro, if there's other better masculine influencers, 100%. A young man needs... Nobody looks up to people that they, they don't uh, aspire to be or have some like some credentials like people look up to like rich people people are like um 
well in life that that, that com, um completed a lot through through their life. That's why a lot of people do look up to Tate. But Hamza is uh gives a lot of good advice. He's a free soul. He gives positive energy, um, positive I- advice. And you can see all the people that do listen to him, they get their shit together. It's not only the gym, it's about it's mentality too. Needs masculine role models, and he's chosen me and Andrew Tate. If there's someone better, send it to him. The issue is, I don't know about you. I want you to just imagine the kind of girl who's wrote all this, right? And then, you know, she's worried about her brother watching these videos. I want you to think of what kind of masculine role models she would pick for her brother. I genuinely like. I, I don't look into this kind of stuff, right? But I've seen like the modern day masculinity, like oh, you know, masculinity. Um, what's the phrase they they always use? It's like Harry Styles or whatever. Like you know, those like modern day TikTok kind of guys, which shows yeah. like, them in pictures of like skirts. Like oh, look, traditional masculinity is it's old now. We're, modern masculinity is. Guys wearing makeup. <laughs> this is the kind of person that this little girl is gonna send to her brother. Do you think that's right? This young man, this 14 year old, has been watching my videos, Andrew Tate, and he has chosen us as his masculine role models because he probably doesn't get that in school or from his parents. And this woman is gonna try and convince him to not watch content like this, to not become more like Adonis, to not become more wealthy and ambitious and, and confident and happy and mentally strong and stoic. And instead, that he should embrace his feminine side. It, this, like, it genuinely, like, I don't even know if this video is gonna be nice because this genuinely just feels like a fake post it might it probably isn't because people genuinely are like this you know because of how much i've talked to you about people like you know just like i always laugh oh yeah like they, they want us to be weak and your know, feminism and stuff the seeing someone actually talk in this way it makes me feel like this is just it can't even be real this comment is pretty good this is the only comment that i've seen that's actually worth like talking about telling him it's okay to hey, yo, the way they yo it kind of seems to me that it's not real too but It blows my mind because I also think like there is people out here like this. Like there's probably a big sister out there like this. Like thinking her brother getting his stuff together is toxic. Like I don't know. Like I'm confused. To be feminine probably won't be helpful because the overwhelming majority of men don't want to be feminine and are not wired for it. These guys like Hamza and Tate are so popular because modern society has no answer for young men anymore. So many boys are raised in a broken household with no father. These guys will ultimately cling to almost any credible guy who offers them a path to something better. It's the truth. Honestly, like, you want to know something about me? I genuinely don't think that I'm that amazing. When I look at how many guys follow my words, almost 1.5 million, it throws me back because I still, like, you know, my identity is definitely definitely updating as I become more and more of a leader. But I, I still just see myself as like a guy who just goes to the gym and you know, I just said some like good words on the internet and people like latched onto this message. I don't think what I say is that incredibly special because a lot of it's kind of common sense. Once you peel back the conditioning that we've been through, a lot of what I say is just coming from religion like islam it's coming from the natural way of things that men should be masculine and women should be feminine and specifically that men should not be feminine and women should not be masculine i say some simple stuff and yet the message has went absolutely viral because of how much young men actually want to hear this because you don't want to be weak you don't want to be feminine you want to go to the gym build a good body yes. feel physically and mentally strong make a good amount of money get the attraction from women get the respect of men and genuinely i'm not boasting when i say this but by following what i say and become I always say once you wake them up, man, it's, it's like they cannot not see the truth. Like it's just impossible. They see the hypocrisy. Like it is too. They can't go back. They can't backpedal. They they see the world for what it is. Basically, they're taking the red pill. Becoming more like Adonis, you will get those things. Undeniably, you will get those things. By following what Andrew Tate says, by becoming more like him, you will get those things. You will get the respect from other guys. You will get the attraction from women. You will feel mentally and physically good about yourself. You will make progress to goals that make you feel happy. And perhaps the reason why this message has went so viral, because this is the first time another man has looked at you and actually encouraged your dream to become a man. Because all of your life, that dream of wanting to be an actual man has been throttled and they've told Told you well why don't you just be like a girl instead because girls are as good as guys at everything why ever embrace feminism why don't you just embrace your feminine side like these people will literally tell you you should yeah. embrace your feminine emotions like you should cry more think about that their positive advice to you is that you should cry more they- yeah, the most dangerous thing in this world is a fem- is a guy that embraces his, his emotional side or feminine side domestic violence um just violent violence and period like that That's the wrong advice for men, like, especially young boys.
that you should feel more sadness, more feminine emotions that makes you feel weak. My advice to you is that you shouldn't cry. My advice to you is that you should be stronger, more disciplined so that you can achieve more. If you follow my advice, you will have more positive things happen and you will achieve more and feel happier. If you follow their advice, you'll cry and be feminine and be in touch with your emotions and ask girls about their hobbies and interests and wonder why you're getting left on red and ghosted all the time. Why that Chad jerk kind of guy always seems to get the girl that you've got a crush on. There's more comments. I won't go over many of them, but this, this last one. In my opinion, there are two big reasons kids start with stuff like this. It's a fad and it will pass. I don't think so. I don't think wanting to become masculine as a young man is a fad. I've discovered this kind of content and this kind of way of thinking when I was 17 years old. I'm 25 now. It was not a fad and it did not pass. They are in a crisis and need intervention, not for the red pill beliefs, but for what drove them there. It could be mental issues like depression or anxiety. So this person saying that someone finds these videos because of a crisis like depression or anxiety, which is true. A lot of the guys who, who originally find my stuff are very depressed and anxious about their lives, stressed, overwhelmed, just unhappy. And that's why I've made so many videos on mental health with the real way to improve your mental health. This content is tailored to reach all of these people and comfort them with garbage. And that garbage is really comforting. I don't think so. I mean, calling it garbage is just like a straight up insult, but we'll take it, right? This person's saying that this kind of content is comforting. I don't think so. I don't think when you listen to me talk and I call you out and I call you a and I say that you're not working hard enough, I don't think that's comforting. It's definitely the opposite of comforting because they don't speak. They don't pe um. They call you out on all your bullshit. They not very. They don't say it very softly. They they say it how it is, and that's what I kind of like respect about it. Like they talk to you like a big brother, like how I speak to my little brother. I always tell him, "You need to get your shit together," type shit, type stuff. Like just tell it like it is. It's, we're not women. You talking to men. Thing, do you? Oftentimes I've said that comfort is the killer of man. You don't come here for comfort. If anything, you come here for the opposite of that. You come here for discomfort. You come here to be called out. For the first time in your life, you come to a place voluntarily because you want to hear that you're not doing enough and that there's more things you can do to become a man. And if that's how you feel, this movement is for you. These people on this, this page have called me a YouTuber many, many times, but I'm not a YouTuber. I'm a leader. I'm a leader of over a million men. Me. And this movement is just getting started. Click and watch this video right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Yeah, that was sus right there. That was hella zesty. How y'all feel about that chat?